In this video, I'll be making a mash paddle to use with my mash lager ton for all grain beer brewing. When doing all grain brewing, it's important that all the grain be in contact with water so that the sugars in the grain can be properly extracted. As opposed to a regular spoon, a mash paddle is long enough to reach to the bottom of your mash ton and also has holes in the blade to help break up balled up grain. For my paddle, I'm using a piece of maple that I salvaged from an old dining table. I first start by cutting the piece to a length of 36 inches and ripping off the part of the piece with the groove already cut. The final width of the paddle is about 2.5 inches. Since this piece has finish already on it, I skim off the finish with my planer. I now start laying out the paddle. For the blade, I'm going with a 12 inch length with a hand sized pommel at the other end. Otherwise, the shaft of the paddle will be about one and a half inches wide. I will now lay out the holes in the blade, which are spaced one and a half inches apart. To help the Forstner bit track, I punch starter holes with an awl. Finally, I lay out the curves on the piece. The holes in the blade are 1 and 1 8 inch diameter. To smooth the holes, I'm putting a small 45 degree chamfer around them on both sides of the paddle. And since I had a bit of tear out on one face, I ran it back through the planer again and rechamfered that side. Now it's time to cut out the final shape of the paddle, which I do with my bandsaw. After that, I smooth the curves with a sander and a spoke shave.
If you don't have a stationary belt sander, it's simple enough to flip your mobile belt sander over any vise and use it that way. With all the curves sanded to my liking, I now go about putting a heavier chamfer on the edges of the paddle. This makes it much nicer to hold, and also protects the edges from splintering in use. To commemorate the making of the paddle, I used some number punches to add the year. I would have done my name also, but apparently my set is missing the Z. I'll have to come back to that later. And then sand off the pencil marks left over from layout. Since this paddle will get wet in use, I wipe it down with a damp cloth to raise the grain of the wood. This way, it should not get such a fuzzy surface texture when I've sanded away the fibers that would have raised once it got wet. All that's left to do is give it a final sanding, paying particular attention to areas where the wood got burned by the chamfer bit. It doesn't make the paddle perform any better, but it certainly does look better. After sanding, the paddle is done. I don't recommend finishing with any sort of varnish or oil, or anything at all really, since this would transfer into your beer and possibly ruin the taste. As you can see, this paddle is a great length for use in a 10 gallon mash lauder ton. Thanks for following along as I build! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.